Praxis Prepper. Wee! Everybody, this is Praxis. I have a mouse in this bucket. It's inside of a trap inside the bucket. And uh, I caught it over in the uh, east greenhouse. Uh, the east greenhouse is still not completely sealed up. There are some ways for mice to get into it. And I've been catching them in there because we like to open up the house to the greenhouse. And when we open up the doors to, to the house to let in the warm air from the greenhouse, I don't want mice running in. So whenever we can, we catch them. And I'm bringing them down here into the woods. And you'll see where I'm bringing it down. But uh, on the way, I wanted to talk about something that's been a uh, video topic that I've uh, promised that I would uh, share with you guys for a little while. And that relates to, uh, well, uh, I asked my boy <laughs> this morning if, if he'd like to, uh, you know, come and release the mouse. And uh, he, he wasn't dressed yet, so he just uh, elected not to. Uh, but it, uh, you know, reminded me that I want to do this video about, uh, you know, getting uh, kids in your family uh, to participate more. Uh, I have been trying out some techniques that have uh, been working pretty well. I mean, obviously this morning, you know, I'm the one bringing it down. But uh, I have been trying some techniques that have worked pretty well. And, you know, I think it's always great to be able to, you know, share what works, what doesn't work uh, with people. And, you know, maybe you might want to try some of this stuff out. Maybe you'll get some use out of it. Obviously, not every technique works with every family, works with every kid. Um, the only ones in that might work for a while with me. And then, you know, maybe it won't work anymore. But, uh, you know. Nonetheless, I figured I'd share it with you on my way down to release the mouse, and I'll show you where I where I drop it off. Uh, we go across a stream over here to make it so that the mice don't just uh, run back to the house. You know, hopefully they're not going to try jumping over the stream. So uh, the technique that I've been trying uh, is something based on um, a lot of reporting I've seen lately related to uh, Native American techniques about uh, getting kids to. Uh, uh, participate more with the family. I guess a lot of anthropologists have gone and you know done research with indigenous peoples and uh, one of the kind of common things that they see an awful lot is that you know the kids in those families uh, you know they don't have to be you know cajoled really to, to help out. A lot of times you know they just sort of organically jump in and participate and there's been a lot of question about like why that is and how great that is because you know not only is it uh, you know good for the family to have you know more help with more people participating but also it is uh, you know it's good for the kids because it's teaching them life skills early and uh, it just makes them more functional uh, competent adults um, that you know know how to take care of stuff we're down by the stream right here right now so this is a stream we put them across on the other side of it so mice can't jump across so uh, the technique that uh, I've been uh, you know hearing a lot about and oh you know before I go on about that I'm to say this is, uh, this is something we've been working on here is just kind of making this area a little bit more livable uh, when my boy plays down here I oftentimes like to do some uh, site work and made this this stone wall that uh, kind of acts as a uh, a barrier for the water. This area back here actually used to all be just mush and swill and now it's like kind of a nice grassy area. There's a couple of hammock stands up here and uh, just the other day when I was here, you know, I, I always like to be busy. Even when, when my boy's playing I like to do something. I was working on these steps uh, because uh, when people were stepping up they were kind of wrecking the slope there. So I've been putting in these these stone steps here. So anyway, Back to uh, getting kids to uh, participate and help out. So um, the technique that uh, I've been reading a lot about is the idea of engaging kids in things even if they are not really going to be helpful. I know that um, something that I was doing that wasn't really um, very effective, <laughs> I guess I want to say, is asking for help from my boy when I kind of needed help or asked for help with something that was kind of like a complete task and uh, you know thinking that oh you know my boy can help with that and that will give him kind of a feeling of accomplishment that he can do this whole complete task and um, I didn't feel like that was working out very well uh, I wasn't getting a lot of buy-in with it uh, so this uh, technique that I was uh, hearing about was well you know what I'm gonna leave a I'm gonna leave you in suspense because we're we're at the place where I, uh, I usually drop the mice off right here. Get the camera on a tripod. I'll just set it down here. You can see the uh, the event as it unfolds. I usually like dropping mice off near some kind of a structure or something where they can maybe find habitat. Uh, there's a stone wall that runs all along here. I mean, this is just a big boulder at the end of it, but there's stone wall all the way down. 
when I release them out of this, these traps, I uh, just uh, pop open the doors. Yeah, well, he's gonna run right out. There he goes. And he just goes right into the nooks and crannies of the wall there. If they don't go out, sometimes you have to take a stick and kind of, you know, shoo them through there. So, anyway, that's done. They, you know, my best uh, bait that I can use for catching mice, I find, you know, everyone's always like, oh, my, mice, they like cheese. Um, maybe they do, but you know what they really like is peanut butter. Uh, I find that uh, peanut butter is one of the, uh, the favorite foods of mice, and I happen to have some rancid peanut butter that I, I made several years ago, um, and uh, it's a perfectly good use of it because, uh, you know, we're not going to be eating it. I, I bought some peanuts and I ran them through a, uh, a grain mill, which you can also use to make nut butters with, and um, it just, I, I didn't use it up and it went rancid. So I just kept a little bit of the rancid stuff in a jar, keep it in the refrigerator, and um, whenever I need bait for mice, uh, the peanut butter it throws out a lot of uh, aroma, so it draws the mice right in, and I found that it's worked really well for catching mice, and I like, you know, waste not, want not. Which is not actually from the Bible. I, I always thought that was a biblical quote, uh, waste not, want not. Apparently it's not actually in the Bible. It's, it's been attributed incorrectly to, uh, you know, some sort of kind of Bible source, but, uh, you know, it's not from there. It's a good quote, but, you know, not from the Bible, apparently. Um, okay, so, um... Yeah, how I got my boy to start uh, engaging with things a little bit more. Um, what I've been doing is giving them small tasks. The idea is, is you get uh, get the kids kind of to start engaging on like some kind of a small level, and it kind of starts building up the habit of doing that. And by small things, I mean like if I'm walking uh, through a room, I might say, "Hey, can you get that door for me?" Now that door might be something that you know I could. I could open up myself, it's not a huge deal, uh, but it's a little bit of help, and um, it's an easy thing for him to do, so that's what I, I started. I started off uh, asking him to help me out with things that were really small, so he would just kind of get into the habit of, you know, when someone asks you to help, he gets up and he does it, because it wasn't a lot of uh, effort on his part, and that started creating the habit in him to uh, say, yeah, okay, I'll help you with that. When I was putting this video together, I realized that I was really vague when it came to examples of, uh, you know, sorts of, uh, you know, asks that I was sending over at my kid to uh, kind of get him into the habit of saying, yeah, sure, I'll help out. I mentioned that I'd ask him, like, uh, hey, could you open the door for me if I've got stuff in my arms? But there were a lot of other things, too, and I'm sure you have, you know, ideas of your own of things that, you know, you know, might work for you, but I might as well share some of the things that I was doing. Uh, and just for example, like uh, things like, uh, hey, could you turn on that light switch uh, when I'm in the kitchen? If he happens to be in the kitchen, I might say, could you get a spoon out of the drawer for me? Or, you know, uh, after a little while, uh, things like, uh, you know, my boy likes measuring uh, and stuff. Uh, so if I was making something, I might say, hey, could you uh, fill up this measuring cup with, uh, you know, a cup of water for me? Uh, other things that I was doing that, uh, you know, I was asking for help with were, uh, you know, things like when I'm outside, if I was holding something, I might ask, hey, you know, when I, I need to reach something, I might ask, hey, could you hand me this thing? You know, if there's a drill on the ground, I've been, you know, building this place behind me here. Uh, if I needed to, you know, grab a drill or something, I might say, hey, could you just, you know, hand me that drill or could you grab me a screw? Really, really tiny things. It only take like, you know, maybe like five seconds of his time. But again, the idea is, is to, you know, get that buy-in. So like he gets used to the idea that when someone asks for help that, you, yeah, he jumps in and he helps. And, you know, once I get into that kind of like five second uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, tasks, then, you know, you can graduate up to like, you know, longer and longer tasks once that kind of habit gets, uh, you know, uh, established. That's it. Let's go back to the rest of the video. And after I did that for, you know, several weeks or a month or something like that, uh, you know, we started uh, introducing things that were a little bit more complex. Uh, the, other, uh, the other thing that I uh, have kind of been doing related to that is I have not been, uh, I've been trying not to micromanage it and to be open to the idea that whatever he's helping with may not go well. So again, uh, you know, it comes down to like, are you asking for help when you need it or asking for help, uh, you know, with things that really don't matter that much one way or the other and it's okay if they go a little bit bad. You know, I, I think one of the worst things that you can do is ask for help and then, you know, your kid is helping you but they're not doing it right and you can't help but because it's an important task and it needs to be done right, you can't help but give them a bunch of negative feedback. Now you can mix that with like, oh, you know, you're doing great but, you know, X, Y, or Z, you know, we need to do all these things. Um, but the overall message I think from that is, you know, that they are not 
capable of doing stuff, and that's a that's a negative message, I think. So um, it's important if they're going to be, uh, you know, in this kind of introductory period, introduction to helping, uh, to not get a lot of that negative kind of stuff, and think of it not so much as them helping, but they're practicing the idea of being a helper. So you know, give them very small things to start, just to kind of get them in that habit of saying, yeah, sure, I can help. Um, and then when it starts graduating to things that are more complex, be okay with the idea that the stuff's not going to always be, or maybe most of the time, it won't be done super well. But over time, it's, uh, you know, things are going to get better. And, uh, you know, once they get into that habit of having some competency and being in the habit of saying yes to, uh, to helping, you know, then it's going to push you into a play, an area where, you know, your kid actually is going to be a helpful asset and they're going to be learning all those skills. So I've been trying that over the last, you know, six months or so, and it's been working pretty well. Uh, you know, I, I, I was kind of feeling like, you know, my boy didn't want to help out a lot, and, um, uh, you know, I just couldn't figure that out because I feel like I have a really good work ethic, and I was kind of thinking, well, that would just sort of naturally wear off <laughs> on him, but it didn't seem to be. But once I started trying these techniques, I found that things really were, uh, were getting better. So again, start with little, tiny, tiny little things that are really quick, just get them in that habit of saying yes, and once they get into that, you know, open up into some bigger things. And again, really important, don't, uh, don't feel like it all has to go perfectly well. You don't want to be giving, you know, negative feedback. Uh, even if it's like positively cached, you don't want to be giving negative feedback in terms of, uh, you know, oh, you know, you didn't do it right perfectly. Because that can be discouraging, you know, uh, you know, especially to, you know, some kids more than others are really sensitive to that. They don't want to feel like a failure. So you got to uh, kind of... Uh, you know, approach it from that from that angle. So that's it. I hope you find that helpful. Uh, you know, if you try these techniques out, I'd love to hear how they're going for you. If you find uh, any modifications of them that you uh, think would be worthwhile sharing with people, please do. Uh, you know, share down in the comments below or make your own video. Put a link to it in the comments below. And I'm sure we'd all love to learn from it. That's it. And thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.